my name is Robin Cardin and with My Pink Quilter and I just thought I would share this quick tutorial for you. I've made a lot of this type of quilt and some of you have asked for a tutorial on how to make this. Now just a little disclaimer here. I thought I made up the pattern when I was you know, ironing my fat quarters and I had this idea in my head. There are other patterns that are similar to this. I had not seen them before. I'll share the way that I do it, but there are other patterns out there that you can purchase. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and I'll just show you how to put these together. It's super simple. For this exact pattern, you'll need 12 fat quarters. So I'm just going to pull 12 fat quarters either from one of my fat quarter bundles that I love and I collect, or I'm going to pull from my collection. You'll also need background fabric. Uh, it depends on how big you want to make your sashing. This sashing looks like it is three inch sashing. I made one last night that was four inch sashing. So however you, big you want it to be, you're going to need background. And then if you'd like to add a border, I'm not sure if you can see the border. I have a border on here as well. Um, if you want to add a border, you're going to need about a, a yard for that or a yard and a quarter. And then you'll also need to finish it up. You'll need your backing and then your binding. But I'm just going to show you how to put these blocks together and then you can do them however you want. Sometimes I switch the blocks and rotate them. Sometimes I keep them all the same. But we'll just do the block today. Okay, these are the 12 fat quarters that I've chosen to uh, show you how to make this block and then you can put it together in a quilt. This is not a sewing tutorial. This is just to show you the pattern, how to make the pattern to um, finish this quilt up in this this block specifically. So these are fat quarters. A fat quarter is a quarter cut, a quarter yard of fabric, but it's cut a little bit differently. It's cut, so it's a big block, it's a big chunk. So it's 18 inches typically, I believe by, let me, I think it's 21 to 22 inches. And this is perfect for making these blocks. So I have the 12 picked out and the collection is, actually, let's look this up together. It's Wyndham Fabrics Homestead Life. So if you fall in love with this, uh, you go look online, search for it if you wanna make this same block. So what I'm going to do next is, the first step is choosing your fabric and deciding what you wanna work with. Now, because I'm adding the sashing to this quilt, uh, that's going in between and I'm going to use white sashing. I want to make sure that there's not a lot of white um, blocks or white portions of my block because it'll just wash it out when you're looking at it. And so I like to make sure that I have uh, kind of colorful blocks uh, that I want to work with. And so the next step is I'm going to iron all of these out and I'll be right back. I'm going to start with this bright and fun chicken pattern chicken fabric and I'm just going to lay it I'm using wool mats so some of you like to use ironing boards I actually use here's a little tip these are two wool mats that I just got on Amazon and I actually just put two together like this and I have a nice big space and I just use in my sewing area I'm just using a plastic table so if you're just getting started with quilting you don't have to own it all in the beginning Maybe in the end, I don't know. I'm not there yet. <laughs> but I like to use the wool mats. And so I'm going to lay this out. And I use a spray starch. I use what is called Best Press. You can also get that at your local quilt shop, online, wherever you'd like. And then I'm using the Aliso Pro Iron, which I love. I just ordered the newest model that'll get here in September. So I like to be nice and crisp and flat. It's actually really therapeutic for me. One of my favorite parts of quilting is the ironing. Although if you ask my husband, I don't like to iron. I, I typically don't iron at home. It's not my favorite, but I like to iron fabric. It's very therapeutic. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to iron out your 12 uh, fat quarters and then the next thing I do is I cut out six layers at a time some of you might not be comfortable with that maybe you're only comfortable with one layer or two I go ahead and do six so it's a really quick block for me because I I um, you know do multiple at a time so I'll be right back
the next step is we're going to cut the fabric. So you won't be able to see all of it on camera, but I'll do my best. So I'll just do a couple at a time. Since I do typically normally do six, but I'll just do two for you. So you're going to lay the fabric on your mat. Um, so it's the it's portrait. So if you're looking at a picture, this would be portrait. So it'll be the 18 inches wide by the length, uh, which will be uh, 21 or 22 inches, 22 inches typically. So I'm going to line this down here, but we're going to cut a clean edge on the left side and then I'll just tell you the math and you can cut it. So let me go ahead and line up two on top of each other and I want it to go over on the side because I'm going to cut off so I have a clean edge to work with. So I have here just a six and a half, this is a, I think it's a Creative Grits ruler and let me make sure that I'm, yeah it's Creative Grits and I have my um, Ulfa blade here. I use the 60 millimeter. I know some like to use the 45. So I'm just going to line it up and then line it up on the top and the bottom. So just so I have a clean edge because now it's really important that we have good math when we're cutting this. So I have a clean edge that I'm working with and now I'm going to cut this. This first strip is going to be 10 and a half inches. So go ahead and I use my ruler. It has a 10 and a half inch, inch mark when I turn it, or you can just line it up with the bottom of your mat, which you can't see on mine, but I'm doing 10 and a half inches. Okay, and then I'm just gonna line it up up here so it'll be 10 and a half for this first swipe. Okay, I think I got it. And then I'm going to pull this like this. And then what I love about these, this is a creative grid ruler, like I said, I love that it has the sizes so I can just do five and a half next. I want this next strip to be five and a half inches. So there's only three sizes you're going to be worrying about because this one block consists of three pieces and we're using, we're cutting all of the fabric the exact same and then we're gonna mix and match the different pieces. So now you see I have 10 and a half inches and I just turned it sideways we have better light down here okay so I just turned it sideways and now I'm going to cut a clean edge on the left again so I'll cut this off over here and just line it up on my mat it's just a cutting mat you can get them any craft store make sure that I have it lined up correctly okay now we are going to cut this first piece uh, ten and a half. So this first square will be ten and a half. And remember we cut this strip at ten and a half inches. So I'm just going to line this up. I don't have my glasses on. I don't know if that's a good thing. All right. So this first square will be ten and a half by ten and a half. So we'll be using this. And then right here we're going to go ahead and do five and a half. So then this one will be five and a half by ten and a half inches. Okay, whoops, this will be five and a half by ten and a half, and that's the second part of our block. This is just extra, put it with your scraps. And then this long piece that we have here, we are going to turn it like this. We're going to cut a clean edge again on the left side. Make sure you're cutting off your salvage too, because this is typically the salvage part for me. If you're just using yardage, I'm giving you the dimensions so you can kind of figure this out. It's pretty simple. This one now is going to be 15 and a half inches long. And remember, it's by five and a half inches. Okay? And then you'll have, this will be an extra piece left over if you're using a fat quarter. Let me show you the different sizes you'll have. And then you're going to cut all of your fat quarters the same. So you're going to have your main piece, which is the 10 and a half by 10 and a half inch block, our square. Then you're going to have a five and a half by 10 and a half. And then this piece here is five and a half by 15 and a half. Okay, so we'll go ahead and cut all those up and we'll meet back here and we'll start sewing them together.
Okay, now all of my fat quarters are cut, quick and easy. Hope you're able to do this with me. If I'm ever going too fast in one of my tutorials, you can pause it and catch up with me. All right, so our next step is one of my favorite steps. It's super fun. Uh, we're just going to be working with the square, so the 10 and a half by 10 and a half inch square, and the five and a half by 10 and a half inch rectangle. Now what you're going to do is you're going to mix and match and you're going to lay them up however you like. Now you might want to just take the top one off and then you know put it on the bottom and then you can just line them up that way. I typically don't do that because if they're there are certain colors that I just don't want to put together so I'll just say put that one on that and so then I already have a red on the green so then I'll grab my blue. So I always lay these out all over my table, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Okay, now that they're all in order, I'm just gonna start chain piecing these up. I'll show you one and then I'll speed up the rest. So I'm using a Juki. And I don't pin these. If you're more comfortable pinning, you can do that. I find it's pretty simple if they're just straight um, and I'll do a quarter inch, and I have a quarter inch foot on here, so I can just zip through here. Okay, now chain piecing, I'm just going to grab the next set, which is this one right here. And then I'll turn it over. Now, if it's directional fabric, when I'm make, putting these together, I just... Make sure everything's directional every time I'm doing it, even though some of the blocks might be flipped around later. Just when I'm sewing, I try to make the directional um, work together. Okay, make sure it's flush at the top. I use my fingernails to kind of move it into place. And then I didn't cut it off, I'm just gonna go with the next one. It saves a little time and a little thread. Have the first part of the block cut super easy and now what we're going to do is we're going to iron these open I also like to use the best press when I'm ironing these open and it's fun to open them to see what they look like after you've um, cut or sewed them together so I'll go ahead and I iron this first and then I open it up and I have my seam go that way and then I just take my best press and I just give it a little bit of a spray it's just so therapeutic like I said I love ironing my fabric it's just so fun all right I'll speed this up for you okay now we have all of these opened and pressed and you're going to grab the last piece to this block, which is our 15 and a half by five and a half inch rectangle. And this is going to go on the side. Now it's up to you which side you want. Uh, I like to, if I've opened my seams that way, I might just do it this way. It really doesn't matter. This is totally up to you and how you want to create your block. Now, one thing I want to point out about this block, and I forgot to mention that I named this pattern Blocky, just super easy. I've already made maybe 10 of these, these this pattern for gifts for my nieces for their weddings, for some of my kids, um, and some to have around the house because it's quick and easy. And the best part about this block is it's super forgiving. So let me point out one uh, that one's, I'm like, that one's not a good one because it's perfect, but not all of them are going to be perfect. They might not all line up. You might have, let me point this one out. You might have something sticking out a little bit. It's all going to work out when you're sewing it. So don't stress too much about if this isn't perfect, because if you wanted your quilt perfect, you would have gone and bought a manufactured quilt from a factory, but you're making this from your heart and so it's totally fine that you have your imperfections in it. Okay, so the next step is we're gonna take these strips and we're going to do the same thing is you're going to uh, pick a fabric, the third fabric that you want to coordinate with those. Now I like to make sure that I'm not using the same three fabrics on two of the blocks. So I'll lay this all out probably off camera and I'll go ahead and um, 
go over to the sewing machine. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and sew these. I wanted to do at least one where you could see a little bit better. You can see the actual, where I'm starting over here in my quarter inch. Okay, I want that shape to go on like that. Okay, I'll just do one and then I will speed up the rest. My juki is a little bit loud, but it just goes super fast. And that's what I like, so I'll go kind of slow for you. Just doing the quarter inch on all of these. Here we go. Okay, here is the final block. I've already ironed this one open just to kind of show you what it looks like finished. It's a 15 and a half by 15 and a half uh, unfinished block. So once you sew it into your quilt, it's 15 by 15 inches, which is great. If you want to make a small baby quilt, you can just do three blocks across, two, three blocks down, four blocks down. You can just make it bigger and just add more fat quarters. So I'll go ahead and iron the rest of these open for you. Okay, these are all of the blocks. I have them on my wall and I have put them in um, an order that's pleasing to the eye. And I'm just going to add three and a half by 15 and a half uh, inch strips in between every row. So two, four, six, eight. And then I will add two and a half by whatever the length or width is for one, two and three, and then I will add a border. But that's it. This tutorial was just supposed to be on the blocks. So I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope to see you soon. Bye.